Now we have Emma Shirky speaking about the importance of biological psychology. Why are you who you are? Okay, first, that's a totally loaded question. And you might think I'm about to stand up here for 10 minutes and go on some kind of rampage that makes you question everything you've ever prided yourself on knowing you are. But not really. I'd like to explore with all of you tonight why you've been able to go through your life so far knowing exactly who you are. Hi, I'm Emma Shirky. I'm a sophomore here at Oaknall, and I'd like to talk to all of you about why biological psychology is important in all of, all of our everyday lives. Biological psychology is a field of science that shows the connection between our physical selves and our mental selves. According to dictionary.com, biological psychology is the study of psychology that deals with the effects of biological factors on our behaviors. But according to study.com, biological psychology is the study of the brain and the nervous system with a psychological perspective. Whichever way you choose to look at it, <coughs> biological psychology shows the connection between how our brain takes who it wants us to be and transfers that into actions and habits and emotions and all the things that make us unique. One of the main importances of biological psychology is the ability to understand what's going on inside of our brains. So by a quick show of hands, who here can relate to the fact that you can feel happiness in many different ways? Right, so there are a bunch of us here, if not all of us, who can relate to the fact that you can have one emotion, we said happiness, but really it can be anything, and you can feel it in all of these different types of ways. Psychology Today talks about the main seven neurochemicals, or chemicals of the brain, that make up happiness. The first is the endocannabinoid, or the bliss molecule. Endocannabinoids come from cannabinoids, which come from the cannabis plant. And within the cannabis plant, there's about 85 different types of cannabinoids, and scientists have suggested that we make at least as many, if not more, inside of our own brains. Second, there's dopamine, the reward molecule, which is responsible for our reward-seeking and pleasure-driven behaviors. Third is oxytocin, or the bonding molecule, which is a hormone that's directly related to our trust in others and our loyalty to them. Fourth, we have endorphins, or the pain-killing molecule, which has been called a self-made morphine if that gives you any idea of what it can do for you. Fifth, we have GABA, the anti-anxiety molecule. One of the most popular uses of this molecule is in sedative medicines. So after it's, the medicine is taken, there's a chemical reaction that increases this chemical in your brain, which calms the patient down. Next, there's serotonin, the confidence molecule which works in a bunch of different ways all over your body, so it's really hard to pinpoint one overarching example of what it can do for you. And lastly, there's adrenaline, which is also known as epinephrine, or the energy molecule. Epinephrine really helps us mainly when it comes to our fight or flight mechanism. I'm hoping that at least a few of these chemicals have sounded familiar to you. I mean, if you've never had an adrenaline rush yourself, you probably know somebody who has. Or maybe you know that famous Elle Woods quote that goes, exercise gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. <laughs> I mean, could you really have happen to think about it? And would you want to pick one type of happiness? Whether it be finding out that you passed that test that you pulled an all-nighter studying for, or coming home every night and seeing your family and your house and your dog and everything that you love. I mean, I know I would never have to want to pick one of those. Another one of the main importances of biological psychology is the medical advances that it's made, especially for diseases that are typically seen as psychological. According to newworldencyclopedia.org, some of the different medical disorders that biological psychology has been able to influence through its research include Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, Alzheimer's, depression, schizophrenia, autism, anxiety, and drug abuse or addiction. And granted, we still don't know everything there is to know about these disorders or the effects that they have on us, but this field gives us the opportunity to fight that. I'd like to show you two pictures comparing two separate brains. On the left, we see the brain of a healthy person, and on the right, we see the brain of someone affected by Alzheimer's disease. Now in 2014, Alzheimer's disease was 
assumed to be the third leading killer among United States citizens. So why is it that when we think of Alzheimer's, we think of all of the <coughs> symptoms that we call psychological, like memory loss, deliria, insomnia. I mean, through these pictures, we can see how clearly it affects the patient physically as well. So yeah, medical advances and understanding what's going on in your brain are great importances in biological psychology. But my all-time favorite importance of biological psychology is the ability to understand someone's personality physically. I'd like you all to take a second and think about somebody you know. Whether it be yourself or someone else, it doesn't really matter, but I'd like you to think about their defining characteristic. Chances are, whoever and whatever you just thought of are able to be described physically through his or her physical self. I mean, when I first asked myself this question, I thought of one of my closest friends, who I consider to be incredibly driven. Now, if you think about it, one of, the, one of the molecules that I mentioned earlier, dopamine, is responsible for our reward-seeking behaviors. I mean, this theory isn't tested or anything, obviously, but if she's so driven, maybe she has high dopamine levels. I mean, it's possible, right? To give you a little bit more scientific background about biological psychology, there are two main parts of the brain that are influenced through this study the prefrontal lobe and the limbic system. Some of the parts of the limbic system include the hypothalamus, the hippocampus, the amygdala, and the limbic cortex, to name a few. And to put that into English for you, those are the parts of the brain that react with chemicals to produce your emotions and your habits and your actions and all the things that make you you. Scientists have discovered that in the, from the National Institute of Mental Health, scientists have discovered that the amygdala and the hippocampus play significant roles in most anxiety disorders. In most anxiety disorders. If we take one, if we take one emotion, let's say anxiousness, there's a scientific way that you become that emotion. Through just that one anxious moment that your hypothalamus and your amygdala have occurred, you can become wired to be anxious all the time. And the same article that told me that further describes how another one of the molecules that I mentioned before, GABA, goes on to further explain how that molecule can counterreact all of those anxious moments until they're ultimately non-existent. To show you what I mean, I'd like to leave you with this final image. Here we see a huge range of emotions from love to depression, and they're all shown chemically. All of these emotions are reach this point in their chemical being through one simple pattern. Event, chemical, emotion. And through this pattern, we see how we become who we are. It's constantly amazing me that biological psychology is able to help <laughs> us understand how we're made, what we're made of, what's going on inside of us, how we got to that point, and why we are who we are. <laughs>